We would see uh, a Ganassi 1-2 in the series. Look at this, they're beginning to build up the speed now. We're ready to go racing once again. They go through the chicane, head down the straight, and then they will pick up the green flag. Look at Zanardi, look at Vassa. Vassa was on the grass coming out of the chicane. Now they're coming down to take the green flag. Is Zanardi going to go for it down the inside? He's having a good old go. Vassa comes in wide, and Zanardi goes through. Now that goes back, but Vassa cuts back on the inside. And now they're heading up towards a right-hander. So who's going to have the advantage? Zanardi is a fraction ahead, but they've got to watch out for Paul Tracy who's behind them and finally Zanardi does take that position Tracy tries to go around Vass and he does it wow that was an amazing piece of overtaking from Paul Tracy there and watch out for Dario Franchitti who's right in that battle Vassa comes back oh and Franchitti goes up the inside of both of them and Tracy goes into second Franchitti loses out he goes back to third Vass is on the outside and watch out for Alonso Jr. on the inside this is just a fantastic racetrack there's Michael Andretti making the move on Alonso and Junior, all sorts of dramas there. This is a great race, right? There's so much room here. Yes, you can defend your position going into a turn, but it's going to cost you on the exit, and that's where people are going to part you. And that's exactly what happened there. Tremendous stuff. Alex Zanardi, meanwhile, well out of the front, but here is that battle there. These tires a ton of pickup. Look, Look at, at Simon Pagano. Pagano's making a move on the outside. They touch. Pagano, power, contact, and Charlie Kimball off in turn four. And Simon Pagano racing incredibly hard down into turn four. We talk about these restarts being the time to get it done. And I'm sure that's the byproduct of all the pickup on the tires from that yellow. It was unbelievable to see the rubber flying in the air. We're all over each other again, side by side. You will not get two cars through there. Oh, but they try, and here's the carousel. Pagano still trying to attack. Power Just slides wide. wide. Pagano yeah. inside. Oh, Are they going to get it done? They touch again, and Pagano comes out ahead. It looks like perhaps power might have been. This car is off the track. Look at those Ganassi cars ready to pounce. Everybody's ready to run. It's Will Power who will see the green flag first. Let's go back to racing. Four days on the outside. Franchini, Dixon, they're in there. Kimball is on the inside. Hunter Ray has the middle slot. Little contact there between Hunter Ray and one of the Ganassi cars. On board with our leader. Bordet really pushed the issue straight at the restart, but he's dropped back now. And he's under pressure, Steve. Big pressure yeah. on the way up to turn three. Scott Dixon on the inside of Sebastian Bordet. Got it done. I think Sebastian Bordet will be complaining again that the tyre pressures are too low. He was saying that the car was perfectly all right on that first set of tyres. Oh, this is not good. Three wide trying to go through that kink. <laughs> <laughs> Look to the inside. Oh, Hinch takes the shortcut. Nice one. There's Kimball on the outside. Oh, 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 oh. These two guys who have made good Whoa. but nobody more than Charlie Kimball, who's made up nine positions from his starting spot. There's Andre Ribeiro, who started second, but Ribeiro was only 22nd in the morning warm-up on full tanks. Ribeiro getting past in that radical new Penske car, the PC27 Mercedes. Bob, he's got to have a problem. He's been running so fast. Look at him drop back. You don't lose that much speed. I, I would imagine something's going away on the car, the handling, probably in the tire area. Ribeiro, a sensation in qualifying, putting that car on the outside of the front row. Right now, he's under attack. Adrian Fernandez, his former... And look at that move. Oh, oh, Bob, did you see Gilles Deferi? Knife right through the two of them. What a move. Castroneves has dropped to eighth. Plus two, plus two. There is Dario Franchitti, you heard. Plus two, that means Hornish has a two-second lead. Now, will Elio try and hold up? I don't think it makes any difference. Elio could let him go right now, and he does. Well, Elio's just holding on right now, trying yeah. to just get to the end of the race right oh, now. Oh, here comes Mira. Mira goes below the yellow line and takes over the position. So Frankiti gets snookered by Vitor Mir. Oh, and a tire goes down on Elio, and the yellow is out with four to go. Just in qualifying, although Danica Patrick right now Whoa. is coming up in fifth. And contact between Justin Wilson and the six of Ryan Briscoe, and I'm wondering if anybody cut a tire on this one. Here is Will Power as he is on the move. He's already gotten around Danica Patrick. He's going to try it. 170 miles an hour. Justin's going to have to give, and Danica's right underneath. Here we go. Things are getting dicey. They have contact, and Wilson holds the spot. A very nice move, though, by Danica to make sure she was trying to take advantage when Will Power dove on the inside of Wilson. 
Remember when Will Power was almost a lap down after lap one? Here he is in third place. And Danica Patrick, who was nowhere to be found, here she is with the Scott Dixon trying to catch up to her, getting around E.J. Vizo. That is for position. Dixon moves up to sixth, Vizo to seventh. He sets sights on Danica. And Danica's car really was junk all weekend. And that's why I said in practice and qualifying, they didn't have a great weekend. But she has really come on strong here in the races right now. Dixon's going to start to look to set her up coming through turns one and two. Back on the gas here. He just looked like he Ooh. just kissed the wall. Just he did. a small amount trying to get the power down to get that run down here on Lakeshore Boulevard. He does not seem close enough. He did brush the wall. I saw the tire marks left behind. While all this is going on, here he goes, diving in. Oh, and contact behind him. It's Mario Marias and EJ Vizo. It looks like both are going to survive, but it's going to be a local yellow, at least for now. And there, Dixon gets around Danica. There, in fact, as you can see, as Greg Moore and Maurizio Gutemann go chasing after Paul Tracy, but in fact, uh, Michael Andretti there, on board with Michael Andretti. He started in seventh position on this restart. He now tries to get past Patrick Carpentier. Carpentier making a move on Al Unser Jr. Unser Jr. on the outside as they come out of turn four. Unser Jr. not quite able to hold off Carpentier unless he can do it down into turn one. Carpentier still trying to make this move stick on Alonso Jr. Jr. still keeping around the outside of him through turns one and two and right behind them we've got Michael Andretti looking to pick up the pieces or oh, the advantage should anything happen ahead. Unser now trying to squeeze in ahead of Carpentier. These guys have been running side by side now for nearly two miles and Unser still trying to fend off the young Canadian. Ali Max Carr of Carpentier on the inside and Jeremy what about this? What a race! This is nearly three miles. This is absolutely fabulous stuff. Well, Carpaccio is still on the inside. It's a shorter way around, but he can't carry, carry quite the momentum into the corners from that inside line. Here he is, turn three and four, and so still sticking it out on the outside. Fabulous stuff. Really good. And don't forget Patrick Carpentier in his first season of this type of racing. He has raced in the Atlantic Championship on this track before, but he's been fending off Alan Jr. And finally, finally he gets ahead. And now we should see him take the advantage. But what great clean racing between these two. That's what oval track racing is all about. And he's side by side. Starts and restarts are going to get trickier as we progress. You heard the call. We're racing again in Indianapolis. Dixon got hung out because the car in front of him was slow. He's now back in the mix and trying to defend. And there goes Frank Eady. Dario gets a huge jump. Oriol Serbia looked like the car that was slow to get off the ball. And it has cost everybody but Dario. Look at that three wide through the corner. Down on the apron. This isn't going to work. Somebody's going to have to back up and take the warm-up lane. I have never, ever seen that be done. Was that the 98 of Dan Weldon? I, I, I could not quite see the number, but it sure did look like his pace. And there he is. No, he, yeah, he's back a little bit further there, so he has dropped back a few spots. So these cars have been two abreast for the whole first lap after this restart. And different techniques. This was on the restart. Oh, wow. He got a good toe off of Michael coming down the pit straightaway. Michael started to come back on the racing line and Montoya just barged his way through. Very reminiscent. They just agonizing wait 12.2 seconds for Dario Franchitti. It's, uh, it's a good stop there. And look, Juan Montoya making a move on Paul Tracy. Trying to go around the outside, and he's going to do it. Juan Montoya gets around the outside. They're still side by side in the second part of the S's, and he's gone through. He's done it again. Juan Montoya takes the lead of the race at Mid Ohio. And the Ganassi driver. For Kenny Breck, something's going to have to happen very quickly here. It may happen in the shape of Max Pappas and Oriol Servia just in front of him. As now you know, Max Pappas fighting for position for Servia is not going to make this easy for DeFerrin. DeFerrin get caught there. Here comes Kenny Breck. DeFerrin comes down the inside. Breck moves to the outside. Breck takes the lead with two to go. You're clear. You're clear. Now let's go, go, go. And that's the race right there. The timing had to be perfect. It was. 
Kenny Breck, the dominant force on ovals this year. Team Rahal looking to repeat, shutting out Gilles Deferrin, the series champion, from his first win. But Deferrin now coming back with one lap to go. No real traffic to help. DeFerrin's right there, doing everything he can. DeFerrin goes high. And DeFerrin takes him. DeFerrin takes him on the final corner, final lap. And Jill DeFerrin wins his first race of the year. What a brilliant move. He had a tremendous amount of speed on Kenny Breck, drove it down to the inside, right to the grass. Good move, man. Good move. That was spectacular. Because Thomas Schechter is a man on the move. He started 13th, and here he is all the way up to 8th in the number two car. Let's take a look. Looking on the outside, going around the high side of the lane. He knows he can get away with that right now because the track is fresh. There's no rubber marbles up there on the track whatsoever. What a great job. And here we go on the onboard right now. Look at this. Gets blocked just a little bit. That looks like the 20 car of Ed Carpenter, that green and white car just up ahead. Watch from going around the outside now. Takes advantage of again through turns three and four. Remember, he will not be able to run this lane later in the race because it will be full of those rubber marbles. Ready to go. The boys are anxious. Let's do it one more time. Final 36 laps. Will power the front. Here comes Charlie Kimball. Right around the outside. And look at Castro Devos up on the high side. Like yeah. I said, guys, don't count him out yet. He just passed three cars on that restart. So with the bonus points gone, it comes down to this. It's as simple as this. The blue, white, and red car up on the high side. Elio Castro Neves needs to win this race to win the championship. Can he do it? Well, we know he oh, he's can. Squeeze there. But he's got a bunch of cars left in this race that all think they can win tonight. Dixon to the inside. Dixon goes down low on Will Power and takes the lead of the race. That was a gutsy move. And says to Elio Castro Neves, if you're going to beat me for the title, you're going to beat me in the race first. There's Emma. That's Scott's wife. She's feeling the pressure. Anxious times with 34 to go. And Castro Neves has come from last to third just like that. There may not be many cars left, but boy, they're putting on a show. These guys are all on new tires. There is dust everywhere on the track, and they are sliding all over. Here comes Elio. Three wide, right Three wide, Three wide, wide and Castro bottom. Neves is putting his foot down, saying, I want this championship. It's not over yet. And I don't think Charlie Kimball wants to be there at the moment with these two guys going at it. He is stuck inside. And just like that, from last to first, for the moment, Castro Neves sees a clear... Over track racing is so much about momentum. As soon as you get boxed in and have to come off the power, you lose that critical momentum. Suddenly, Manson went from challenging from the lead to defending his second place from Emerson Fittipaldi. Oh, look at this. Tracy around the outside of Ray Hall. And encounters Scott Brayton running a little slower just ahead. Brayton locked in with Mashusta. And he's passed. So is Manson. Look at this now, Manson is right behind him, there's Ray, oh, he gets so close. Had to back right off where he would have hit Nigel Manson. Brayton runs in sixth place. Guerrero is fourth, Gordon is fifth. Ten laps to go now. This is the fight that's at the front, and now here comes Mansell making a bid as he blocks Tracy up in behind Scott Brayton, and he gets beside him, he gets alongside. But now Brayton comes down, and Tracy regains the lead. This is oval track racing at its best. Mansell tried to use the traffic, almost pulled it off, but Tracy saw where his opportunity was going to come around the outside of Brayton. As Paul Tracy continues to hold off Nigel Mansell, Emerson Fittipaldi waits and watches in third place, about two seconds back. Al Jr. needs to stay high. He needs to stay high. He does. Both of them get down the inside. There's more traffic, though. Brian Till is now just ahead of this lead pair. Fight for the lead continues. Fight for championship points. A fight that can move Paul Tracy into third place in the championship points battle. 
pressure is on. The pressure is on Paul Tracy. This will be his finest win, probably because of the relentless pressure from Nigel Mansell. He still chases him down. He has five laps to chase him down and pass. What a 40th birthday present this would be for Nigel Mansell. His second oval win, a continuing lead in the points. He'll leave here with a point lead no matter what happens. Look at this, Patrese protects that line. Mansell is right behind him again. Look at this. And Mansell swings to the outside. Tracy down low. They dart in and out. They use the advantage of Stefan Johansson and Mansell takes the lead. Now Tracy's in trouble because he has to make all the risky moves. Now Mansell gets caught just a little bit. Tracy's going to get a run on Mansell. He'll block him. Tracy makes his move to the outside. Very close together they come as they head down into the first turn. But Tracy stays in second place. Tracy seems to have more grip on the inside groove down here at turns three and four. Tracy again looking for an opportunity. There's not that much time left, just two laps to go. Well, if Mansell pulls this off, it will be a tremendous victory. It's by far his best yet, because he outboxed everybody, waited for, for all that time before he pounced. And Emerson is not a factor. Moving for the final lap now. Traffic moves out of the way. Tracy tries to close. Mansell runs flat out into the first corner. No traffic ahead. He pulls away from Tracy, going through the second corner on the back stretch now. Heading for the third turn. Nigel Mansell makes the turn in. Tracy has little or no opportunity at this point. And here he comes. Happy 40th birthday, Nigel Mansell. That was as good. Closing 20 laps of an on over track race as I have seen. Congratulations to Mansell. A tremendous battle with Paul Tracy.